On April the 28th, 1986, Mikola Bonda was summoned to the military conscription office, issued a uniform and sent to Chernobyl along with another 353 reservists. Their battalion was deployed just five kilometers away from the burning reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. That night we could see the station as it was still engulfed in flames. In the days following the explosion, the radiation level near the reactor was 20 to 500 gray per minute. That's enough to bring on acute radiation syndrome within minutes. Symptoms first include anorexia, nausea and vomiting. The platoon commander gave me radiation meters like these. I have five of them lying around. When we worked there, they all maxed out. One of Mikola Bonda's tasks was to pump water from the reactor. That meant working literally a few steps away from the epicenter of the explosion. I was standing here, and there was the entrance. That's where hoses were dropped. And there I was, taking a look down at the reactor and the radioactive water. I had no faintest idea what I was being exposed to. To protect their bodies from deadly doses of radiation, liquidators were only given protective suits and gas masks like this. They were told that tasks needed to be performed as quickly as possible. Mikola remembers their unit being informally referred to as the Kamikaze Battalion. The Soviet authorities made sure that information on the involvement of reservists in dangerous missions in Chernobyl was classified. We have unearthed some documents and it turns out we were all awarded by the state posthumously. Those involved in the early days were not rescuers, they were victims who were largely unaware of what they were in for. According to different estimates, from 600,000 to a million people were involved in disaster relief work at Chernobyl. Among them was Anatoly Nosovsky, who was a radiation safety supervisor during the construction of the first confinement facility known as the sarcophagus. Radiation specialists came ahead of the workers. They measured the levels and calculated shift times for workers using formulas. There were instances where a worker would just rush into the area, shovel one piece of highly radioactive nuclear fuel into a container and get out of there in a hurry. And he would be done for the day. That's to keep everyone's radiation dosage within limits. Within three months after the disaster, 31 people had died from radiation exposure. 134 people were treated for acute radiation syndrome, all of whom were either involved in the rescue or were power plant personnel. But when it comes to long-term repercussions, the Chernobyl disaster affected the well-being of millions. Over the past 30 years, this radiation factor gave Ukraine thousands of cases of thyroid gland cancer, cases that wouldn't have happened had it not been for the disaster. Radioactive iodine, cesium and strontium are only a small part of a long list of isotopes, which were carried by wind and spread all over Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, as well as the rest of Europe. In fact, radioactive fallout from the Chernobyl disaster was recorded as far away as Japan. These are maps of radiation levels detected in Ukraine before and after the catastrophe. Darker spots mark more polluted areas. In the six months following the blast, disaster relief workers managed to bring down the radiation level drastically. In many cases, it was at the cost of their health. Some paid with their lives. 80% of us ended up having cancer, and that's usually the cause of death, actually more than 